Happy New Year, Canucks fans. I thought if I was going to do start off this new year in the proper fashion, there's only one person that I wanted to bring on. This has been six months in the, in the making, but I'm so grateful that he spent time with us today. Welcome to 2021 and welcome to Steve Dangle Glenn. Hi, Steve. How are you? Excellent. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for making the time. And I know we won't, we'll be honest, we're recording this on New Year's Eve. So I know you have family things to get to. And speaking of family, tell us about Leo, six months old. Isn't it amazing being a dad? Oh my God. Um, it's, and what a year to become one. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely been a chance to, uh, I, I mean, you, you focus on, yeah. on being a dad, right. It's not like there's been any games, uh, to distract me or anything. Um, you know, I'm just glad I got to be in the hospital because like, wow. uh, he was born in June. Right. And so, we're we're gearing up and we're getting ready around March and then all that news breaks and you know you hear these rumors around April and May and it was it was a scary time and uh, we were in hospital for four days as well and it was the last place we wanted to be Um, (laughs) but uh, no he's six months old now he's awesome and you know we've we've been watching hockey together we we watched uh, we watched the playoffs very briefly for the Leafs. We got to watch some Canucks, though. Yeah, um, thank you. <laughs> little, little, little bit of KHL in there. I've been yeah. watching the World Juniors, so uh, he he likes it. He also likes soccer. I think he just likes bright colors. That's awesome. And what's your wife's name again, Steve? Sarah Louise. Sarah. Okay, that's awesome. Well, congrats to you. Yes, and I got twenty years on you, so my kids naturally are nineteen, seventeen, and thirteen. But yes, there's no better feeling oh than being. Oh my God! Wow. Yes. Well, I'm an old guy. Wow. Um, Tell me, does he have a favorite player, whether it's Leafs or not already? Uh, Emma from the Wiggles. <laughs> she's good. She was a late uh, free agent addition, but uh, she's doing well in there in that show. Yeah, her and Nathan <laughs> Walker, the only two Australians in the NHL. Yeah. That's amazing stuff. Okay, so we know you from a lot of things, from Sportsnet, from YouTube, your podcast, your book, uh, Cameo, I know you're on now. Um, honestly, yep. from, a, from a time perspective, management perspective how do you do it and i, I think uh, truly this i think a lot of aspiring content creators want to hear from you is how do you fit it all in well the, this coffee so there's one has yeah. booze in it there's two um no it's you just sort of do it um you know it's uh it's um i i, I heard i heard someone talk about this once and uh it i don't know for some reason it's always stuck with me but it's like you ever look at the night sky for too long and it fr- starts to freak you out a mm-hmm. little bit. That's because if you start thinking about it too hard, it becomes impossible. But you just got to, you know, management is is an important thing. But I'm not very good at it. Um, you know that from trying to book a uh, podcast <laughs> with me. But um, it's more just do it. Just do it. You'll feel better that you did it. Um, yeah. You'll feel and you'll feel even better once it's done. Yeah. You know, that, that's what I always tell myself with work um you know cameos have have been uh, have become a big one and i can go downstairs and do one or two or i can suck it up and take the extra little bit of time to you know knock off 10 15 something like that so it's it's, it's, i've never once been like oh i'm so glad i put that off yeah no get it done get it done yeah, and, uh, that's, that's true. And a true story. We were talking about actually even moving this because it was New Year's Eve, but the get her done attitude prevails once again. About the cameo, Steve, is that something where someone actually came up to you and said, hey, you would actually do well in this? Or was this your idea? Or where did that come from? I'm trying to remember. I, I know my sister-in-law said something to me, but uh, I, I want to say someone at cameo approached me or something like that. It was. Wow. I'm not even sure. I'm not even sure, but uh, I'm, I'm glad I did it. It's been, uh, you know, it's definitely helped fill the time. And yeah. I've gotten some cool opportunities out of it. Um, What's been the weirdest like, one? Ooh, the weirdest one? Well, I saw you tweet about one about feet, but I don't know if that was a joke or not. Oh, no, that was real. Okay. Uh, I've gotten two of those requests for feet pics. Uh, I said no. Uh, <laughs> Thank God, no. <laughs> there, uh, you know, I've, I've done a few, like... Um, you know, you, you do the, the weirdest ones are like the pep talks. Um, eh, maybe not the weirdest. I shouldn't say weirdest, but the ones that I'm least prepared for. Happy yeah. birthday is easy. Merry Christmas is easy. Happy yeah. Hanukkah is easy. You know, I've done done a bunch of those. 
but um you know with, with 2020 and uh I, I don't know if you notice what's been going on but uh you know people have been having a tough time with it and yeah. uh you know often get asked hey this guy's it's sometimes the the what i'm fed is this guy needs to pick me up and he listens to your podcast go yeah and i'm like man i gotta come up with two at least two or three minutes with that <laughs> it's but you know it's so far every, everyone seems seems pretty pretty happy and yeah you know it's it's always great seeing the reaction i love when people tape it yeah um there, there's been a bunch of those that's that's a cool feeling that's awesome. Well, any, uh, you know, as a, I work for the Catholic church, so have you got any baptism first communion confirmation ones yet? Uh, you know what? I think I did do a first communion. Awesome. awesome. I think I did a first communion, no baptisms. Yeah. But like, I have gotten a bunch, like this is for Ellie's fourth birthday. And I'm like, okay, I'll try to come up with something for that. Like, yeah. it's, and all um, of a sudden, I'm I'm not Steve Dangle. I'm Steve Burns from Blues Clues, and trying to trying to figure all that out. He's on cameo too. <laughs> well, well, hey uh, man, you, you're you're speaking my language. Wiggles, Blues Clues. You know, I, I'm sure Dora the Explorer will be in there later. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I want to ask you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I want to ask you about a few of your your exploits. So, Sportsnet. What's your role on Sportsnet right now? I know you're an on-air contributor once in a while. Is that like a formal thing, a scheduled thing? What is that right now? The Sportsnet connection. Oh God. Uh, yeah. almost, almost never. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a little, I suppose it's a little loose. Mm. So my, my main priorities, my main responsibilities are digital. Yeah. Um, so throughout the season we do hat picks, which are basically highlights dang it's, which are basically bloopers. Yeah. Um, so, so we do, we do a ton of that. Then there's just, it's a little bit of hurry up and wait, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you never know when a trade is going to get announced yeah. or someone's going to get offer sheeted or someone's going to get signed or is it Dano Chara to the caps? <laughs> I didn't hear a thing about that until it happened. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so it's a, it's a, it's a lot of hurry up and wait the off season. We filled it with historical dang it's like looking back at big bloopers from throughout NHL history. So like Patrick was statue of Liberty goal. Yes. Uh, also Patrick was being left in net for, nine goals leading to his trade to Colorado. A lot of Patrick Waugh. That was rough. Uh, yep. And uh, our trade tree videos. Yeah. I was going to ask. Yeah. They're, they're monsters. And yeah, we, we can get to them in a minute, but the, the TV stuff, I was doing a show called ice surfing. Um, mm -hmm. That was all digital. Unfortunately, we're not doing that this year. Once again, okay. I don't know if you heard what's going on, um, but uh, uh, that was a really cool idea. But in terms of TV, it's just every now and then maybe I'll get a text just, yep. Hey, you want to do this today or that today? I'm I'm usually on trade deadline, but gotcha. You know, only a handful of times. I'm not exactly on the insider's desk, you know. I'm not exactly Christopher Steeg or something like that. <laughs> not yet, but you look good plugging in that extension cord, man. And that uh, it's on video. Man, commercial. you know how many takes that took? That Tell was, me. That thing was stiff and old, and it didn't work, and uh, I felt stupid. I, I was surprised they even invited me to to like be a part of that. And I'm like, my role is to plug in a plug and I can't do it. <laughs> God. Let, let's talk about quickly your podcast and book, and then we'll spend some time on your YouTube channel. So your book, this team is ruining my life, but I love them. I know you passed through Vancouver around draft time, just after your book got released. I know you love Vancouver. We know Vancouver loves you. Oh, um, love yeah. How's that book going for you? And uh, start time to finish. How many years was that in the, in the making? Oh my God. Um, I want to say I signed the contract for it in 2017. Yeah. Um, maybe the end of 2017. Uh, took like 18 months or so to, to write, but that was, that was on and off. So right. I wrote X amount of it uh, one off season. Mm -hmm. I want to say it was the, no, I was, mm, I think I was working on it in the 20. Mm, summer of 2017 i think it was <laughs> yeah uh and then um you know uh, i i i figured okay i'll write a thousand words a week throughout the season even though i have stuff to do <laughs> and clay i almost never did um so my my just do it just get it done yeah um you know sometimes just do it just get it done collides with the reality of there are 24 hours in a day of course um so uh, it was around March or April 
uh, you know, and then 2018, the uh, Leafs are heading into the playoffs. And I am, I wrote, I think it was 75,000 words in maybe two or three weeks. <laughs> I, I wrote a lot, um, a lot that spring. They give you a lot to write about, Steve. And, and you know what? Like, you know how many game seven losses to Boston didn't even make the book? Or like the Columbus series, them losing to a Zam- their own Zamboni driver. Yeah, we'll get to that too. <laughs> David, what what a great guy too. I wish he was hateable. Stupid jerk being nice and amazing and generous. So overall, the voice that comes out, you know, you hear about editors and publisher, blah, blah, blah. But the voice that comes out at the end, you ha- I presume you're happy with how it turned out. Very. Oh, awesome. you know, it's it's one of those things. It was It was one of the things I've done where I was okay with any mistakes that made it into the book Hmm. Um, because it was like 120,000 words or something like that. And not, not to mention 40 or 50,000 that were deleted. Um, Didn't even end up making it. Uh, Probably should have held on to those because, you know, in case I ever want a sequel. Well, oh, well. (laughs) Um, But uh, uh, it was one of those things where I worked so hard on it. I'm like, I couldn't, I couldn't have done a better job. Awesome. So if a mistake makes it in, that mistake earned it. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I, the Lindros trade tree, we worked for that, or we worked so hard on that. Um, the Gretzky one that we just released, we could yes. not have worked harder on those things. So if we made any mistakes, we did our best. We did our best, but I, I don't think we did. Awesome. Congrats. Yeah. Now I want to get to e-bug and trade trees in a second. Uh, your podcast though. So before we get to YouTube, the actual podcast that you guys do, tell uh, the viewers about that. Well, we started it. Well, I should, I should, I should, I should go uh, back. So I went to school with Adam Wild, um, who, yeah, she's on a national show. You guys would know. Uh, his mm. mom is Marilyn Dennis. Mm. Um, and, uh, but like, he didn't draw attention to that or anything in high school. He just wanted to be Adam, right? But he always had a, a passion for radio, like she did. And we were friends, and you know, we were just talking and. One day in class, uh, he's just like, you know what? One day we're going to do a sports show together. <laughs> and I said, okay, yeah, cool. I'm down. That'd be dope. Um, and then nine years later, you know, he had been all around the country. He had jobs in Halifax. He came back to Toronto briefly. Then he went to Calgary and mm-hmm. then he came back and he worked all over the country. Once he put down his roots a little bit, he said, hey, let's try a sports show. Um so we started that in 2013 yeah. and uh, you know, we, I shocked him with the first episode because, you know, we did it and it got a thousand listens and he was like, Oh my God, for our first show. I'm like, it, it better. Like, cause I, I already got, you know, I got, I don't have a massive YouTube following, but I got some, remember this was seven years ago, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. I got, I got, I got at least some, I hope it's a thousand, but the, the way it grew into this thing whatever this thing is uh it's hard to believe so it's the three of us me adam yep. and jesse blake our producer mm-hmm. uh who joined us a year in J- just two really special guys really smart really funny um and every now and then like sometimes adam and jesse will be talking to each other on the podcast and i gotta remind myself to speak up because i just <laughs> i just enjoy listening to them so much so Gosh, I think steve dangle is a good job yeah, I can't imagine you as the third quietest guy in a group of three. That's that's pretty crazy. You know, outside of the Leafs, I think I'm relatively normal-ish. Yeah, yeah. Incorporate the Leafs. I'm a. I would if I wasn't doing this for a living, I'd be that insufferable person in the office. Just. Oh yeah, the Leafs are. I'd be coming up with trades. When when I worked at the Toronto Zoo, worked there for seven years. I, they lost money on me. Like with all the receipt paper I wasted, just pushing, pushing the button to get it to come out and writing out what I think the Leafs line should be. And then, you know, my shift started at nine. I'm already done. It's nine 15. All right. I'll move on to the Canucks. I'll move on to the, the flames. And I got the whole NHL by the end of the day <laughs> and, and an office that looks like I'm the Zodiac killer or something like that. It's ridiculous. I love it. I love it. I love it. And it uh, just so, I mean, people haven't, just in case they haven't heard the name of your podcast and they, I presume they can find it everywhere, but it's called the. 
the Steve Dangle podcast. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So I'm sure we've missed a couple of things, but we've talked about Sportsnet, Cameo, your podcast, your book, but I want to spend a few minutes talking about you two, both your content and maybe advice to content creators, if we can get to that, Steve. Um, and if you, you bear with me for my little uh, soliloquy here, I know that you were very instrumental, not uh, for, for many hockey YouTubers out there and some doing it very well, some doing it not so well, uh, but you've always been very great with advice. And I know you're someone, even though you're 20, 18 years younger than I am, who I looked up to as I started doing my little thing. Now I just do one take wonders from my car, as you know, but that's, that's my style. It took me a, a while to find my style. So before we get into your content itself, would, is that a fair you know, advice to give to content creators is to not try to be the next Steve Dangle or whatever, and just have fun and, and make sure that you're passionate about it. Like what else can you add to that? Don't try to be the next me. I'm amazing. You'll never. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Can you imagine if, if, I, if I if I thought like that and spoke that way? And oh my god, oh, that'd be no. great. Oh no, um, I don't. I don't think it's good to be, you know, if you want to be the next, yeah, Steve Dangle or the next, you know, I, I never tried to be the next anything. Yeah. And in my book, I talk about you know getting compared when I was younger to uh, Cabby Cabral Richards. Yeah. Which is flattering. I he's amazing, but. I'm, I was never trying to be the next anybody. Um, so what I would say is just do what you think is best. Like do what you think is the most fun, make the content that you want to watch. Mm. Um, and if along the way you bring in other things that other people like, because you make that decision, you, you think it'll make your content better. Go ahead. The, the main advice I would give um, beyond just creating and just make the content that you want to watch stick to it. I'm, I'm so uh, uh, it's heartbreaking. Every time I get a message on Instagram or Twitter, Hey, I started a podcast. Hey, I started a YouTube channel yeah. and they get sick of their new toy within two weeks, yeah. a month. The, a lot of the good ones last six months and then they're done. Like just do it. Just yeah. do, even if you feel it's like a player going through a slump, even if you think you're doing a bad job and you make a month's worth of crappy content, just eat the month, eat it, just battle your way through it. And who knows, something will come up and then you'll get a greasy one. You know, you, you get a greasy yeah. goal in front of the net. So, you know, let's say, you know, you're, you got a Canucks YouTube channel mm -hmm. and you, for a month, you got nothing, nothing's mm -hmm. coming to you. Nothing special about the team or anything. And yeah, that was Rock November. Besser that... gets traded. <laughs> what? And like, you know, Elias Patterson for Austin Matthews. What? You know, you, you never know when that moment is going to happen. And, you know, that happened for me. Um, I didn't stop making content, but I very clearly stopped trying at the end of the 2011-12 season. Mm. Um, I just wasn't having fun with it at all. And the universe took my toys away. Um, because the lockout then happened and I that's why the 2013 season when it began my channel I, I was shot out of a cannon because I was so happy to to have hockey back so you know I was I was six years into it at that point but I was talking like it was this brand new world because yeah. that's how it felt so you got to try to bring that enthusiasm to it that's a great point. And the consistency is so key. And it doesn't have to be daily. If you're a weekly thing, do it weekly or if you're semi-weekly, but as long as it's people know that they can expect to see your content at a certain yeah. day or time. Yeah. Ske scheduling is good. That's, that's one of those things I would file under like to have, Yeah. you know, because especially if, you know, you're 21, 22, 23, you're trying to finish up school or, you know, you're working two jobs or, or something like that, or even, you know what, if you're older and I'm discovering this, you got kids, Yeah, man, that, that's hard, you know? So, but it, you know, if, if you can't, if you have a Wednesday show and you can't do it Wednesday, that doesn't mean you don't do any shows that week. Yeah. That means you try to do it Thursday or you try to do yeah. it Friday or just try to do it. Just try, just try. There's so many, it's amazing how many people just don't try, try. Anyone can try for two weeks too. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing. How many times have you gone to the gym and be like, and just totally given it. And then you go home and you check your abs in the mirror and they're not there yet. So you stop. Yeah. Now I'm not giving fitness advice. <laughs> I mean, I think you can see that, well, but I'm with you, man. But <laughs> I mean, cheers. Happy new year and everything. But um, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know much about getting abs, but yeah. I do know a thing or two about 
you know, a podcast or a YouTube channel, just try, just yeah. try and keep trying. Steve, that's great advice for, yeah, a vlogger, a blogger, a podcaster, amazing stuff. So uh, my two sons, the 19 year old knows a lot about hockey. His name's Sean. The second guy, Jacob, doesn't know so much uh, about hockey, but he knows about YouTube. So when I told him, I was running downstairs to set this up and I told him, oh, I'm going to interview Steve Dangle. And I said, who's, he said, who's that? And I showed him, I said, look up Steve Dangle, e-bug. And he was losing oh, it for the, fir- for, the, for the first minute. Uh, the, the tenor of your voice, you know, the way that it, it soared to angelic uh, heights. Um, <laughs> how, how are you feeling after that one? Because we all know the story, but your, <laughs> your vlog was amazing. Uh, thank you. There was one of the few, it was one of the few where I had to do it night of. Yeah. I often sleep on it. Sometimes when I know the whole fan base is mad and I want to be mad too, I go, you know what? This can't wait. And I'm not going to sleep on it. I'm not going to let cooler heads prevail. I'm just going to lose it. And if I wanted to do a more in-depth breakdown, that's when cooler heads need to prevail and I'll do it tomorrow morning. And, and nope, they lost to a an e-bug. What? What? So I, I just blew up that night. And it's fun. It's fun sitting in that that uh haze of it it, you know it's silent you're in you're in your basement um and you upload the thing to the internet but you can hear the commotion online yeah as you're looking at the screen it's a phenomenon i don't know how to explain it and people were losing it right away (laughs) losing it right away it was one of those things where like the, the first time I ever really experienced something like that was the Leafs lost nine, two to Nashville a few years ago. This is 2014. Mm-hmm. I'd just been hired at sports and I was less than two months in and I had to go to the office that day. So I walk in and Sid Sixero stands up at his desk and starts applauding. <laughs> He's a Steve Dangle, ladies and gentlemen, Steve Dangle. Oh, that was, that was amazing. That was amazing. So like you could sort of feel that coming from wow the, the e-bug game and, yeah, is your so basement you soundproof? See blogs pick it up. And, yeah. Oh yeah, I'm I'm trying to make it soundproof. You can sort <laughs> oh, of see the. Awesome. Sorry. That was my pandemic project. It. Oh, ask my wife. It doesn't work, <laughs> but it looks okay, and it gave me a few hours to to fill. Yes. Over the well, last nine months. When I hear you get going, Steve, I don't think there's anything that's gonna actually filter your voice completely. No. And I mean, and it, just as a content creator, I was very curious when you do the jump cuts. You know, the quick side angles and profiles. How much of that is uh, premeditated versus no, I'm just going to do this. And then I, I, oh, I remember to do an interjection that way. Like how much of that do you actually plan out? Oh, pff, almost none of it. Like yeah. it, it's, it's mostly on the spot. I've also, this is, uh, I'm about to begin my 14th season doing this. Like yeah. I've done like, I don't even know how many videos I've, I've shot and edited on my own. It's, it's over 2000 for sure. Wow. Um, and so it becomes this thing that's yeah. difficult to explain and the timing and what's going on in my head. It would just slow me down way too much to write it down. Yep. Um, and you already know, you already think about how you're going to edit while you're doing it too. So you kind of have all those tricks now down. Oh yeah. Way. Yeah. And sometimes something will occur to me and I'll be like, no, I need to go back to do, do, do. I need to go yeah. back five clips yeah. and erase all that. And like, I have these hand signals that I give to myself. So it's like, in the moment, I know how I'm supposed to edit it later. So I tell myself, no, do this, do that, do that. And it's maybe not the most professional way to do it, but whatever, it works. And, uh, you know, every now and then a better line will occur to me or, oh, I forgot to talk about this, like game altering penalty or right. something like that. Um, no, that that's makes perfect. Of course, of course. Speaking of, uh, I don't know if it's perfect, but they're pretty close to the, your trade trees. Very, very popular. Uh, you know, you just did the Wayne Gretzky one. I know that I, there's two players still left, right? Two prospects that are still floating around in the Kings yep. organization. Is that correct? Uh, yes. And if I can remember their names, uh, I can't. I can't. But nope. Marcus yeah. Phillips is one. Yeah. Er, something rhymes. Rhymesha. <laughs> I, for, I forget his first name, but there are. From the August 1988 trade yep. of Wayne Gretzky, there are still two players involved that could continue the trade tree. The Oilers half is done. Yes. The Kings side yeah. could still continue. Is that the biggest one you've done? Or has there been other bigger ones? Or is that the biggest one you've done? It was the most involved. Yeah. I would say the most names is the Gretzky one, but I still say the Lindros one yeah. was more difficult 
from my point of view. Yeah. Uh, Tom Stewart and Drew Livingstone, the producer and editor who who worked on them, they would they might tell you the Gretzky one was harder <laughs> because there were more graphics, more sound effects, more everything. Oh, the Lindros it... one. Ah, you know what? The Lindros one even used more footage because the 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 trades. Uh, not trying to insult any Oilers fans watching this or even Kings fans, but uh, so many of the trades were relatively inconsequential. Yeah. In the Gretzky trade tree, there were a couple big ones and you spend some time in them. The Lindros one was nothing but hits. Like it, yep. it's, it's amazing what the Quebec and Colorado organizations right were from able the start. to get out of that. Yep. Oh, like that deal happened. I guess it was 90. No, no, that was 92. Yeah. I think they get Wa in 96 because of it they got rob blake in 2000 or whenever it was they got adam deadmarsh out of the deal they got oh uh theron flurry out of the deal they, they yeah. got uh dave anderchuk out of the deal they they got a thousand and one things they got um robin regeer was involved <laughs> somehow how did that work oh he was sent to the flames he was drafted by the avalanche i did not know that and he was sent to the flames as future considerations. When was the last time you ever heard of a first round pick be future consideration? So that, that deal was, that yeah. melted, that melted my head. That I was the it. most notes I've ever had for sure. And some would say Forsberg for Lindros would have been good enough at the time. And it, honestly, <laughs> honestly. And, and you know, that was another fun part. Like that, yeah. <laughs> I, so I talked about Lindros. Yeah. And we showed all the footage and everything. And I'm like, this video is already like 10 minutes long. <laughs> Then I did Forsberg and I'm like, okay, we're at close to 20 minutes and there are at least 30 or 40 other players to talk about. <laughs> like it was, uh, it was, uh, folks go watch it. It's a yes. great, go watch Lindros and Gretzky back to back. It's a great way to kill an hour and a half. <laughs> awesome. Yes. Everyone watching this, as soon as you're done, I, in <laughs> fact, I'll link to them in the description below. Make sure you check out Steve Dangle's trade tree of both Wayne Gretzky, the most recent one. And of course, this phenomenal one, legendary one of, Eric Lindros. Okay, a couple more to wind up. What do you think of the Toronto Maple Leafs? Truly, their chances this year, at least regular season-wise. Let's not worry about the playoffs yet. A lot of people, even even people here in Vancouver, media fans alike, are saying at least on paper they they they're stacked, especially up front. Anderson's improving, decent back end, maybe not the strongest ever, but this team could win the North Division in the regular season. Agree or disagree? I agree, but like yeah. uh, them winning the North Division means nothing to me. I, and I think it means nothing to the fan base too. Yeah. It'll be cool pride. You know, yeah. uh, you know, it's the all, I think we can all agree. The all Canadian division's awesome. Yeah. It's so fun. Um, there's going to be a lot of anger, <laughs> you know, a lot of, it's going to be very fiery. Every game is going to matter so much. Yeah. Um, so winning the North division would be huge for bragging rights, but it's win a playoff series or bust. Yep. Um, but then I, I pointed out on my podcast recently, Joe Thornton did not come to Toronto to win a playoff series. Yes. You know, he, he, he wants to win a Stanley cup. Jason Spezza wants to win a Stanley cup. The young guys want to win a Stanley cup. Who doesn't want to win a Stanley cup when they're young and then go out and try to win another one. Yes. Um, so did the Leafs have what it takes? I, I think so. Mm -hmm. I think, I think the biggest addition this off season, we've exhausted the, the toughness train. We've it's been way <laughs> too overhyped. Yeah. They're a tougher team for sure. Yeah, But let's talk about the fact that Morgan Riley, whose best defense partner in his entire career as a Leaf, was Ron Hainsey, yeah. is, is going from Cody Cece, essentially, to TJ Brody. Yep. Now, you can talk about, oh, he's past his best or whatever. I, he's better than Cece, dude. <laughs> he's better than Cece. Tyson Berry, yeah. um, you know, was his, his partner for a while. Um, yeah. <laughs> It didn't work at five on five. It yeah. didn't work five on five. I think as Clefbaum's replacement um, while he's injured in Edmonton, that's a good role for Barry. Mm -hmm. But he had to be given first power play minutes. And Riley was coming off 20 goals and 72 points or something like that. Yeah. So the, the Leafs are, they're, they're good there. Um, so, mm -hmm. sorry, that was a very long way of saying no. um, th they're better because of Brody alone. Um boy yep. their defense just was not in the galaxy of good enough um yeah. and now is it the strongest in the league no is it top half maybe sure. i think it's good enough to get by sure. frederick anderson is good yeah um the offense 
you would think is top five, mm-hmm. at least on paper. We'll see how the depth does. The depth let them down a little bit last year. Mm-hmm. They, they have what it takes, but especially when, when, when you have a division that's just the seven Canadian teams, you're leaving a lot to chance because a lot of goofiness can happen. You never know. The Sens might run away with this thing. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. It's so crazy that, you know, no Canadian teams in the top 10, as you know, last year, but six of the seven of them or five of the seven smashed in the next, the next 10 for sure. And as you can imagine, Steve, the story here is that half our team went to Calgary. So we're interested in, in, in those games as well. <laughs> oh, you, you got to have a huge rival rivalry with them. Like I, I think yeah. uh, you don't want to finish last for sure, but I think the Canucks could finish last in the division, but as long as you beat Calgary, right? <laughs> Like as long as you could go winless the rest, as long as you go undefeated against the Flames. They they took Tanev, they took Markstrom. Didn't yeah. they take Levo too? And Levo and, and, and Louis Domingue. Very good. You know your stuff. <laughs> Buddy. All right, all right, Steve, to wrap up, we're going to go very quickly. Just uh, five questions. You can answer them as briefly or as broadly as you want. Sure. Number one, the first sport, this is what I call the five hole, obviously a hockey reference. Number one, okay. the sport that you excel at the most playing. Oh, dear. Rowing, like Dragon Boat. Very cool. Very cool. Number two, starting a team from scratch, Elias Pettersson or Quinn Hughes? Quinn Hughes. And I like Pete. I like yeah. Petey, but defense, man, it's tough. It's tough. Need the D, man? No problem. Number three, uh, and you won't offend me because I'm half of both. Uh, you like Japanese food or Chinese food? Oh, uh, <laughs> I mean, Yes. <laughs> I like them both. I I'll say, I'll say Japanese, um, Vancouver. I'm still thinking about that sushi I had 10 years ago. Oh. Of course. Of course. It's the place to be. Okay. Number four, this one, you might have to think a little bit. Uh, let's say this guy was treating you out for dinner. Would you rather spend a dinner with head coach, this Vancouver Canucks Center, of course, head coach, Travis Green, GM, Jim Benning, or owner Francesco Accolini, who would you want to spend an evening with chatting it up? Oh, Aquilini, I think, would be very interesting. Benning, I think, was a Leaf briefly, but yeah. Travis Green was a Leaf that I grew up watching. So I'd, I'd have to say Travis Green. Nice, nice. And lastly, um, I know you live a, a relatively public profile, but is there one thing that people don't know about Steve Dangle that you wouldn't mind sharing for the people watching this? What's one thing people don't know about you? God, that's uh, that's very difficult. I'm I'm an open book. Mm-hmm. I'm an open book. Um there was a big chunk of my life where uh, I guess hockey players were not the athletes that I idolized the most, I guess. Um, that would be a cross between wrestlers. <laughs> I was a huge wrestling fan. You know, yep. Yeah. WrestleMania 14, Steve Austin, Shawn Michaels. I was losing my mind for that. But I, I would say I, I grew up idolizing uh, sprinters because um, I can still row. I can't run anymore, but I used to be the wind before I got my back problems. Uh, I was running the hundred meter in under 12 seconds. I was fast. That's I was good. fast. Um, so I idolized Donovan Bailey, uh, Maurice Green. Yeah. Um, and Donovan Bailey, by the way, the, I believe was the last clean gold medal in the Olympics before Usain Bolt. Ah. A few guys won it after him, but Usain Bolt was the first clean one after Donovan Bailey in 96. Fascinating. PDs notwithstanding, it shows the era difference. You know, I'm a Ben Johnson guy. You are a Donovan Bailey guy. <laughs> there you go. Right. And, and, and shows what a difference PDs make because Bailey couldn't beat Johnson's time. Well, I, I will say, I, like, I was a decent sprinter, but I my best was a 12.87. So for you to run sub 12, that's pretty good. That I is fast. Good. I mean... According to my teacher's like stopwatch, right? Like we, we didn't have Olympic technology, but she said it was under 12. So I don't know. That is awesome. Well, Steve, I really appreciate you taking the time uh, to chat with, uh, I know a lot of people, most of the people who are subbed to me on YouTube, I'm sure they've either subbed already or they know of you. So uh, thanks for bringing the new year with uh, all the Canucks fans watching this. And I wish you the best of luck. And we can't wait to see all the future exploits that you get up to. So thanks again, Steve, for everything. Thank you. Happy all right. New year. You too. Okay.